And welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin! Last time we returned to the impact site, got everything done we can there, and also raised quite a few Pikmin while we were at it, and we're heading back this time to the distant spring. Uh, off screen I was practicing a trick, and it failed miserably. So we're gonna go back to my own old method. I thought you'd be able to distract an enemy with a Pikmin, but it turns out you can't. Not because the trick is inherently flawed, but just because the Pikmin are idiots. <laughs> um, I was trying to use a koi, I guess you could say, to distract one of those guys over there, these body ball bears, in order to try to collect a part without actually fighting them, and it, this trick failed miserably. <laughs> um, the ball bear wasn't having any of it and chopped the Pikmin anyway, so... Yeah, that strat is out the window. His, these shearwigs are actually vulnerable to water, so you want to lure them into the water. Um, like, like that. Um, there's another one that's probably going to show up as soon as we kill this guy, or not. <laughs> um, there are three. Uh, you want to kill it as fast as possible, as we've seen, because these guys have weird glitchy properties. So, get the guy off on top of the bridge for the reasons we've already explained, glitching this again. The one thing we, I want to show off is these Pikmin are so stupid that they will not just go into the water. They will, like, be confused and just stop whatever they're doing. Hooray for Pikmin AI. Um, okay, I'm gonna try a thing. Hey, 64! <laughs> that was lucky. Um, uh, my experiment last time was about this part, the massage machine, which is actually a required trip part as stupid as, as that sounds. I think it's required, or is it the pilot seat that is required? I was off screen trying to see where these guys go, and I put the decoy in the wrong place. Turns out you don't even need a decoy for this one because that ball bear is an idiot. So, learning something new every day, I guess. Over here, we can see this is a huge area, but they're generally. This is actually generally bigger than the perplexing pool, but that's the smoky frog. He will be there until day 15, otherwise, he will disappear. I am very hesitant to fight him because, frankly, a deathless smoky frog run does not sound like a fun time. Um. And to keep the pattern of this LP, I would want to make it deathless, <laughs> which is just a recipe for disaster and many failed recording attempts. Oh yeah, this Friday, because this video is being recorded in September, um, it's actually when all the new Amiibo come out, but I actually already have an Olimar, uh, Japanese edition. Looks just like it, works just like it, you'd think it would, but it is technically the Japanese Olimar, and it's, I think it's really cool. I think it's one of the better Amiibo because um, like the um, little like action stand parts, I guess you could say, don't look as conspicuous as like Fox where they're dark blue. <laughs> um, like that is something that bothers me about the Fox amiibo. I like it, but it still bothers me how they stand apart on Fox because he's like flip, like jumping in midair. They're dark blue. They should have been clear. All of them should be clear. Uh, maybe clear plastic is expensive, probably? That's my guess. Yeah, I can't remember if the massage machine is optional or not. You'd think it would be optional, but you never know with Olmar logic. These Wallywogs are yellow Wallywogs. Um, we're just gonna ignore them, because we can. <laughs> uh, quite frankly, you do not need to fight these guys. The part will get taken over there plenty fast. Those guys, on the other hand, the water dumples could actually present a problem, but even though, as seen in Pikmin 2, even without the boot knuckle, these guys are wimps. <laughs> um, I mean, look at how much damage I'm doing with Olmar, and he got considerably buffed in uh, Pikmin 2. I mean, basic punching is so much stronger in Pikmin 2, and look how much damage I did to those guys. Um, thing is, I don't want to actually fight them with Pikmin because of where that uh, puffy blowhog is because it's just, it would be a recipe for disaster, at least the way I play this game. 
Um. Hooray. Um. You do not have to fight those two over there. Come next conception. The route of the part is actually really convenient, as we'll see shortly. Uh, Puffy Blowhog works exactly like a picking point. But at least in the crushing glitch, it doesn't seem to happen with this guy. And despite how big his hitbox must be, um, I don't get that personally. Um, so we got a couple of Pikmin um, without leaves. Well, I mean, that are leaves now, but. Uh, so we want to just swarm the bar, as we've seen, that seems to be the effective method. Uh, the interstellar radar. So this broadcasts an SOS, but hilariously, you get so late into the game, because distance spring is unlocked so late, <laughs> it's kind of like not needed. I mean, I've heard this point that Olimar has like, if you play the game well, you should have a ton of time. So this also begs the question of, why the heck doesn't Olimar just broadcast an SOS? I mean, could it really take that long to get there? It really, would it really take 20 days for help to arrive? Because we've seen how fast it can be to get to the Pikmin planet, because they're Pikmin 2. So what gives? Um, uh, it, you might think, oh, shouldn't I be keeping a better eye on my Pikmin? I've done this route, this particular route, so many times I know the Pikmin are in no danger. Uh, the Wallywogs can never actually hurt the Pikmin, as long as you don't get in their way and accidentally alter the paths. Because if you... If they try jumping up to Olimar, and thus their overall positions change, thus they may be in a position where they are close enough to the Pikmin, but this... I just have this route down so consistently, because I do the same day, this exact same way every time. Yeah, they're, this, they're hinting that you don't need everything. It's an overblaster. Uh, one part here, one part in the final trial, which is actually hilariously awkward, and one more part that I'm, a couple more that I'm forgetting. Um, what you want to do is actually dismiss, you don't want to actually try to direct it directly into the part, you want to just dismiss them near the part. I find that works so much more consistently. Uh, and then you just lure them back off. This is how you get to the bridge in Pikmin uh, 2, but, uh, I can't remember if I actually did cheeses or not, like, I can't actually remember what way I actually did it. Oh yeah, and this is the Swooping Snitch Bug, our old friend from Pikmin 2. But anyway, uh, we don't have purple Pikmin, so they are actually a tiny bit annoying. Um, and good time for cutscene, huh? <laughs> this game just knows when it's beacon annoying. Looks like an ordinary bolt, but it's actually a repair robot. Um, so that's why it's called the Pervertite Bolt. There are actually two snitch bugs here. Uh, something to keep in mind. There are two. Uh, always two. There are no more, no less. So yeah, keep that in mind. So you don't kill this one. Like, yeah, we got snitch bug. And then you get combo later on. Uh, there's generally one on this side of the wall. And generally one on the other side of the wall. That's how I remember it, at least. Um, gotta do a little bit of a roll call here. Um... Okay, we do have everyone. Huh, okay, um, if you're wondering, I am a little bit, like, torn about what to do because, you know, look at the clock. It's like we're halfway through the day. Um, it's like, and look at how, like, much we've already gotten. We've gotten, like, ten ship parts, uh, not ten, three ship parts already. Which is really dang good. So... I think what I want to do is go on a bombing run. Put all those Pikmin away. Um, spy ball bears do sleep in this game. They don't patrol like in Pikmin 2. Um, which I can't complain, to be honest, because that is the one of the harder things to deal with in Pikmin 2 is the spy ball bears, because. I don't find there to be a consistent method to do a deathless kill on those guys, except with the uh, spray power-ups. That is the only way I can consistently do a deathless run against a spy ball bear, so that's annoying, because you always, because I always have to grind up a ton more than I actually want to, because grinding isn't fun. Um, anyone who's ever played an RPG should know that pretty well. <laughs> um, I have played quite a few RPGs in my time. Just 
funny because I only got into the genre not too long ago, and I'm all, I've already played like most of the great RPGs, I'd say. Uh, a couple I'm missing, like Chrono Cross I've never played. Uh, though I don't know if that could be considered one of the greats, to be honest, because Chrono Cross you always hear like, oh, it's no Chrono Trigger. Um, but I don't know how it actually is as a game, like on its own merits. How the heck is Chrono Cross, um, like, detached from the inevitable comparisons, I mean. One, two, three. There's actually a cool glitch you can do here. I may try to demonstrate if we have bonus time. It's actually used... It's actually a super helpful glitch, um, but I don't want to do it because it kind of... I don't know. I don't want to speed things up too much. I mean, like, I did technically wait until I had Blue Pikmin to do the uh, Armor Can Beetle, so I am kind of playing the game somewhat legit, I'd say. Um, uh, do I want to risk getting a fourth part? I don't know, actually. Stupid grass. Pikmin are addicts. Um, not addicts, addicts. <laughs> An ad tick. Um, bad pun. There's another part up there, that's the UV lamp in the corner there. It is completely optional, uh, it is just a lamp. You already have the, um, the fuel dynamo. Uh, so it's like, why the heck would you ever need, um, a lamp? Because <laughs> Omar specifically says after getting the uh, eternal fuel dynamo, he's like, oh, no more candles for me. Yet he still has to collect, to collect his favorite lamp for some reason. Uh, now there's this meme about, I love lamp, I have no clue what that actually is. Uh, I mean the significance of it. Okay, I was gonna bomb the wall, but she wigs. Um, I think you can don't have to fight too many of these bow babies in actuality. Off screen I'll probably have to test it, <laughs> so we don't like run headfirst into a fist f uh, face full of trouble. Not the face full I don't even know. <laughs> Um, uh, bomb this. And yeah, you kinda don't want that to go off. <laughs> when... Oh. Okay, so that doesn't detonate bombs, that's good. Um, I wasn't sure what would happen with that, to be honest. Uh, the UV lamp is the only other part in the game, uh, that completely 100% requires, uh, yellow Pikmin. There's one more part that you can kind of glitch it <laughs> and not have to use yellow Pikmin. I'll show the glitch after I bomb this wall, which is also one that I'm pretty sure is actually required to bomb. One, two, three. I, I counted after I already threw them. That was awkward. Um, one, two, three. That was actually on time. And if you can trick it out, you can take out that wall with the motor in the background. Uh, but I don't want- I'm not feeling that confident right now. Um, one, two, three. Ooh, that one Pikmin was kind of being a daredevil there. Um, not as in the superhero. I have not seen that show. I'm not really big on, you know, superheroes or dark media <laughs> in general. So, I have not seen Daredevil. I hear it's good, but it's just not for me. Um, Oh, that was a tangent, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> um, okay, come over here, round up our yellows. Um, we have 100 yellows, which is way more than you ever possibly need. And I want to show off this glitch that is actually super helpful. What you want to do is wake up this little, not that one, this one, over here. Wake him up, then come over here, and then like, rest. I think that's how you do it. And like when he does that diving thing, he can actually shove you through the up to the upper ledge if you have good luck. Uh, I hope it happens because it'd be kind of cool to see it happen. And, um, we're not getting any luck right now, but I I'll probably have to review the glitch. But if you can get up to that upper ledge, it makes the next several ship parts easier because you can run along. This upper ledge up here, where the cursor is, all along there, and this, and you can go. And if you get Pikmin up there, that's good too. 
and you can toss the blue Pikmin up to that, and because this puzzle involves switching Pikmin from blue to yellow, and then you toss them over here, get the part down, and then change them to blues, and um, carry it back. But it's actually possible to do it all with blue Pikmin if you do the glitch. That's a big if, because <laughs> as you can see, I couldn't do the glitch. Um, I can't take these guys down in one second, but it'd be nice if I could have. But uh, we'll, I'll probably take those guys out at some later occasion, because they will get in the way. So the tension parts. Um, so we're on track actually for fairly solid, but we could have gotten a UV lamp instead of doing that little bombing run. But um, I personally prefer just doing it the way I did it because it saves time in the long run. Um, the next day will be like the most, I'm calling it will be the most resetted day of this playthrough. <laughs> um, so much can go wrong in uh, my second day. And I do say my second day because I do have a consistent method of doing this next day. Um, and it goes just as well as it goes wrong most of the time. Anyway, that's day one of the Distant Spring. So next time, on day 11, we will go back and collect hopefully two ship parts at the minimum. <laughs>